how to make some homemade bath bombs. These are pretty simple. They're fun to do with kids and they can also be used as gifts. Um, so the first thing you're gonna need are these molds and you can get these for pretty cheap on Amazon. There's large size, there's a medium size, and there's a small size. And you will also need a spray bottle, baking soda, citric acid, and something to weigh with. Now these are the some that I've made in the past and we just keep these by the bathtub and our girls love to use them, which is one of the reasons why I learned how to start making these. Um, but they also double up as gifts. Now some of the recipes that I found in the past um, made batches and they always ended up cracking. So I found a recipe that has worked for us that does not crack. So that's what I'm gonna show y'all today. And the first thing we're gonna do is measure eight ounces of citric acid. Quit playing with the light, Ellie. Okay, so we're gonna measure eight ounces of citric acid. We're going to add that into our bowl. Now we're going to measure 16 ounces of baking soda. And add that to the bowl. So now what you want to do is you're going to work this mixture and there is any lumps or bumps or little pieces like that, you just wanna get those all smushed up and give this a really nice, soft um, texture because those lumps, any lumps that are in there will show through if they hit the outer edge and make your bath bomb not very pretty looking. Okay, so now that I've done that, I want to add, um, my food coloring in and so since we're going to be making lavender i have added a little bit of purple with some red and blue dye i'm going to add just a touch of purple and i'm going to mix that in slowly mix that in now it probably wouldn't be a bad idea maybe to use a spoon or use um gloves but i'm just going to use my hands and I'm gonna slowly work, kind of work that in. Um, Amazon also sells different types of clays um, for coloring, and I just used regular food coloring. Now, this does not, you do not have to worry about it staining your bathtub or anything like that. It will not stain your bathtub as far as um, that goes, so you won't have to worry about that. So, I'm just going to give it like a little light um, hint of purple color, and you just want to work that in real good. Okay, so I have that coloring worked in pretty well. Um, it's not as purple as I would probably normally want it, but I'm actually out of red, um, red. So we're just gonna leave it like it is. Now, coloring pretty much is your personal preference. Um, as light or as dark as you want it, that would just be up to you. I'm gonna use about four to six drops of essential oil in my um, mixture. Now, this kind of goes with you too. Some people don't really like as much fragrance and others do. I find that four to six is a good medium for us. So I'm gonna add a drop at a time and just work that in to your mixture. You're gonna notice if you let it sit on this mixture too long that it's gonna try to start fizzing. That's because that citric acid is reacting with the liquid. So you wanna get that worked in as soon as possible to prevent that because you want all of your citric acid to fizz once it hits the bathtub, once it hits the bath water. Okay, 
so now that I have my essential oil mixed in, it, I have my smell where I want it to be, my fragrance where I want it to be. So now I'm going to start spritzing this very lightly with water. And I'm going to mix that in quickly. And the consistency that I want to get to is when I can pick it up and squeeze it and it forms a ball in my hand. So that's the consistency that I want to get this to. And it smells absolutely great. These are, are so um, nice adding to the bathtub after a long day. So you can see that ball is still not holding together yet. It's almost there, but it's still pretty loose. So we're going to add a little bit more until we get it to the, that right consistency. Spray it one more time and we're going to be ready to put in our molds. So we're going to do our large mold first and you really have to pack that in on that side and then you're going to mound up some to put the other side together. So pack that in and then you're gonna mound. Then you're gonna take your two parts and work those together. And once you get those sides together, I'm going to take this off, smooth out my line, and put them in my, I just use a little dish pan to let those dry. Now I'm gonna do the medium sized one. We're gonna pack that down in there good. Put a mound on it. I'm gonna pack this down in there good. We're gonna put a mound on it and then we're gonna work these two together. And we'll go ahead and open this up. We'll smooth out our line, let it dry. Now we're gonna do a small one. I'm gonna pack it in on this side, build a mound. When I say build a mound, I just mean make it go higher. I'm gonna pack this one in and we're gonna build a mound. And then we'll put these two together. We'll open it up, smooth out our line. So I'll keep going with this until all of my mixture is done. I'll store them, that they'll be ready to use tomorrow. And happy homesteading, y'all.